There are common algorithms in programming, and one of those algorithms that is commonly used with loops is to sum up total or accumulate values. And that's what we're going to show in this video. Let's look at some examples. What is the total number of running yards for a football team? Given city populations inside of a state, what is the population of the state? And lastly, what is the average salary of employees at a company? You might say, well, you're not summing there, but in order to get an average, you have to find the sum. So this process is commonly used in conjunction with other code. In this video, we're going to focus specifically on taking in grades and summing them up. And these grades are going to be entered by the user. So what I've done is I've created a program. And first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask the user, how many grades would you like to enter in? And we're going to take that value in with an integer value called times. Next, we're going to create a variable that is going to be our accumulator or sum or total, and that's going to be the sum of all the grades that are entered in by the user. Next, we're going to have a for loop that's going to first start at 1, so they enter in the first grade, and it's going to end at time, so whatever number they put in at the beginning of the program is where the program is going to end. And then we're going to increment by one. So we're going to say enter in the first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, so on and so forth. Inside of the loop, we're going to ask the user to enter in the grade. And notice I've put i there, as i will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up to times. It'll work nicely to say enter in grade 1, grade 2, grade 3, so on and so forth. And then notice I have initialized a value inside of the loop called grade. Notice this is initialized out here, and this is initialized in here. This can change every time the loop iterates. We do not want this to be set back to zero every time the loop iterates. That's why this is outside of the loop, and that's why this is inside the loop. Because once they enter in the grade, we don't really care what that individual grade was, and we would continue to loop through the process. The sum, however, we do not want that to happen. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to take the sum of grades and add the new grade to it. So if the grade is 0 right now and I entered in 100, 0 plus 100 would be 100, and that's what the sum of grades would be the next time I would add. And we're going to see how this works through the loop. But there's actually a shorter way to write this using shortcuts, and that's what we're going to do. We're just going to say sum of grades plus equals grades. It's the exact same code as this, it's just written a little bit shorter. And then lastly, once we're done with the loop, we're going to print out the sum of the grades is, and whatever sum of grades is at the end of the loop is what we're going to print out. Another reason why this is outside of the loop. If this was initialized inside of the loop and we try to print it here, it would not print because sum of grades would be out of scope. It would only exist inside these braces. But because it's out here, it's going to work just fine. All right, let's see how this code would work. First, we'd start with how many grades would you like to enter, our prompt. And then I'm going to say, I'd like to enter in four grades, so I put in four. To start with, the sum of grades is going to be zero. Now we enter our loop, so i is one. i is less than times, because times is four. We're going to enter in the grade, and the first grade that we're going to enter in is going to be a 100. So when we get here, we're going to say zero plus 100 is equal to 100. So sum of grades is now 100. Then we increment, i becomes 2, check the condition, it's true. Come here, ask the user again for another grade, and this time I've entered in 90. And so when it gets to this line, it's going to take 90 and add it to 100. So 100 plus 90 is 190, so now the sum of grades is 190. Increment i by 1, so i is now 3 i is less than times, so therefore we enter the loop again. We're going to prompt the user again to say, what is the third grade? And this time I'm entering in an 80. So 80 plus 190 is 270, so our sum of grades is now 270. Increment i again, i is 4. Check the condition, 4 is equal to 4, therefore it enters the loop. Ask the user again to enter the grade, what is grade 4? We're going to say 70. So 70 plus 270 is now 340. We increment i again. This is going to be the last time because the condition is going to be false. i is not less than or equal to times. So because the condition is false, we're going to go to the system out print line statement, which is going to say the sum of the grades is 340. So we see how in this loop we have used sum of grades to accumulate the grades and then print it out once the loop is finished. As was said in the beginning of this video, 
a common process is to sum up values inside of a loop. And so that's exactly what we've done and showed you how to do. We also showed that the sum of grades in our example should have been declared outside of the loop, or any sum should normally be declared outside of the loop. One, because if we try to print it when the loop is finished, we wouldn't be able to print it outside the loop. And two, it would reinitialize it every time the loop ran. So when we got to the end, the sum would only be the value of the last grade in our example. But we also showed you why it is sometimes important to declare a value inside of a loop. And we did that with grade because once the grade was done, we didn't want to print it afterwards. And we didn't care if it got reinitialized every time the loop was done because once we had that value and added it to the sum, we were done with it. So summing up values is a common process inside of programming, and it can be used either by itself or in conjunction with other code. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you like the video, please do click like below. If you want to see more videos like this, please do subscribe to the channel. Truly, thanks again for watching.